Hello everyone. In today's demonstration, I'll be showing you some of the enhancements to the proximity analysis tool available in the version 14 release of Simple GIS Client. So to begin with, for today's demonstration, I have a project that I've set up here. And if you'll notice, I have a couple of layers loaded. One is data that's coming from an Excel spreadsheet. Let me just expand my table of contents here a little bit. Um, so this first layer represents uh, trouble calls that have come in from our customers uh, across a region. And these calls are divided up. They have a uh, attribute field uh, within the spreadsheet that indicates um, whether the call required an in-home repair, um, whether it was a maintenance call, uh, or required a actual shop repair, so the equipment had to re be removed and brought back to the shop um, to be repaired. And then we have this last classification, it's just no data if it didn't meet any of these other classifications. And so we see this as pins on our map here, and we have an open street map, uh, base map as our background at this point. And then the second layer I have is a point layer of service centers across our region, indicated by this blue house symbol um, or this blue building symbol, and as you can see on our map here. And so imagine if you wanted to do a quick analysis for each of your service centers that showed the type of calls within a given radius um, of that service center location, and you wanted to break those calls down uh, into the different classifications and see um, the number of calls within a given radius and what the average distance uh, is to those calls. And so that's what the proximity analysis helps you uh, answer those type of questions and do that type of analysis. So to, to do this, all I have to do at this point, I already have my layers loaded into my map, is I'm going to go up to the top of my map window and find the geoprocessing drop down menu. And as I click on this menu, if I notice about three quarters of the way down um, towards the bottom of the menu list, maybe a little past three quarters of the way, uh, there's a menu option called proximity analysis. And so I would simply click on this menu item. And then at this point in time, I get my first screen that's going to help walk me through uh, completing this analysis. So the first thing it's asking me is to select the layer I wish to analyze. So this is the layer that you're wanting to answer those questions for. So in our case, uh, for service centers, we're wanting to see um, what type of maintenance calls are within a given radius and the average distance to those calls from that service center. So service center is the area I'm wanting to analyze. So this is the point around which I'm wanting to analyze uh, based upon the proximity uh, to features in another layer. And so the layer that's containing the proximate features, that's the, the data or the points um, that I'm wanting to look and see, you know, how many points lie within a given radius around the layer I'm analyzing. And so that would be our customer calls. So in this example, we have the service centers is the layer we're analyzing, and the customer calls is the data that we're wanting to analyze against our service center. Uh, so we're wanting to determine how many of these calls are within a given radius of our service centers and what the average distance is, and then we're going to categorize that by the different types of calls uh, within that given radius. Now, one thing you may notice as you select the layer you're wanting to analyze you may have an option underneath it um, with some radio buttons. In my case, it's currently grayed out. What this allows you to do, if I had already selected a predetermined set of features for my service centers that I've selected here, it would just uh, have an option here where I could tell Simple GIS whether I'm wanting to analyze against all features in my service center layer or only selected features within my service center layers. So if I pre-selected a few of these and I only wanted to run the analysis against those features I've selected, um, as I select this layer, this these radio buttons would be enabled and I'd be able to click on this radio button that says only selected features and analysis layer. Since I did not have any features already selected out of my service center layers, this option is not available. 
and it's just going to run the analysis against the entire, entire feature set uh, within our service center layer. So once you've made your selections, you would click the next specify proximity distance settings button to bring uh, to be brought to the next screen. And it's on this screen where you would specify your search distance. And then you could also go out a set number of intervals if you wish. So in this case, um, my search distance is five. And if you notice, I have these radio buttons underneath this that um, allows me to choose the measurement distance of, of what this search distance is, is going to be. So in my case, it's miles. So my search distance is five miles. And then I have two intervals specified. So that means it's going to run an analysis looking out at a five mile radius. And then it's going to run the same analysis then looking out at a 10 mile radius. So this number of these intervals just increments the search distance by the specified number of intervals. Um, if I had specified three for the number of intervals, then it would look out at five miles, 10 miles, and then 15 miles. Or conversely, if I'd only specified one interval, it would only do an analysis at five miles and then stop at that point. So again, you specify the distance, the number of intervals that you want to use for your analysis, and then you would also need to specify the units of measurement for your search distance here by selecting the appropriate radio button. Next, we would specify any special data grouping. So that would be our next step. So I'd click on this next, specify any special data grouping. And in this analysis that I'm demonstrating today, we actually want to um, do an analysis uh, and, and classify by the call type, which is what we've used in our legend here for our customer calls. Remember, we have an attribute field that indicates whether it's an in-home repair, uh, a maintenance, or a shop repair. And that is that data is in this attribute field called call type. And so that's the field I want to select to group my results by. And so in the analysis, I'll get an overall composite analysis for all the calls. And then I'll also have for each type of call um, that analysis broken out. So once I select that, and of course, you don't have to have uh, a data grouping. Um, so if you did not, if you just wanted the uh, analysis and just show the results for all calls um, within the specified radius. You would not have to select any um, data grouping, but just know that you can select a special data grouping and then it would group the analysis results by that uh, unique values in the field that you've selected. Or in the case, you could select multiple fields if it was a combination of fields and then it would specify the analysis um, by the unique combination of fields selected. And to select multiple fields, you would, could just click and drag to select a group of fields, or you could click and then using your control or shift key on your keyboard, holding that down uh, and then clicking on another field you'd want to include. Uh, in my case today, it's just a single field that defines the unique values that I'm wanting to group my analysis by. So I'm just going to select the call type and then I'm going to click the next button to specify my output layer. So at this point, it's just a matter of uh, specifying uh, my output shapefile that's going to contain my results. So to do that, I'm going to click on this button with the open folder icon. And it brings up the um, file save dialog box where I would navigate to my folder location and then just give it a new file name for my new shapefile that will hold my results. And so I'm just going to call this my proximity um, results. And once I click save, I see that it has now populated the full path and file name for the new shapefile that it's going to create. And now I simply click on the begin analysis and generate new layer to actually conduct the analysis. Once the analysis is conducted, you'll get a message box asking if you want to publish the results to an Excel report. So if you'd like, you could get the results of your analysis in an Excel report. Um, so this is an addition. It will add a new layer to your map as well, um, displaying the results. 
but this also allows you to uh, publish the results into an Excel report and so if you click yes at this message box um, again you'll get a file save dialog box where you can uh, select the folder and just uh, give a new file name for your Excel report and just call it proximity results and then it'll also give you a confirmation whether you want to add the new layer to your map. In addition, since I did select to create the Excel report, it will go ahead and open Excel and show you the results of the analysis. And so in this case, the report will give you a title at the top and gives you the date that the report was run. Here it gives the uh, attribute data for each of the service centers that we selected. So on our service center layer, it's just taking the attribute data and, and printing that out. The FID is just a unique feature ID. Um, then we have a name attribute field, which is the name of this uh, service center. Uh, then we have the number of repair technicians in that service center, number of service technicians, and then you're gonna see the results of our analysis as well. So this is the number so this is the total number of features, or in our case, calls within five miles of the service center. There was 14 calls. Uh, within 10 miles of this particular service center, there was 84 calls. Um, and the average distance to features uh, for the total calls was just over six miles uh, from the service center. And here is where you'll get the breakdown by the call type. So this is breaking it down. So these first two records are just our unique record IDs and our associated table um, for the um, summarization of these call types. So these are just the FID represents the unique feature ID that's related to the service center that it's reporting on. And then this is just a unique record number um, for each of the different call types associated with that service center in this analysis. So if we look at shop repair call type, there was three of these calls within five miles of this service center, 26 within 10 miles, with an average distance of just over six miles um, for shop repair. For in-home repair, there was eight within five miles, 37 within 10, and again, the average search distance, or the average distance uh, for this grouping was just over six miles as well. And then maintenance call types, there were three um, calls within five miles, 21 within 10 miles, and the search distance is a little bit higher on this one, at, uh, just over six and a half miles. It's the average distance uh, for the calls to the service center. And then you just get this repeated for each of the service centers in our analysis. So then you come down and here's the next service center, um, giving you all of that the results of the analysis for it, as well as the grouping for the different call types for that service center. And if we were to look at our map, you see, uh, you didn't probably didn't see this pop up while ago because it went ahead and opened up Excel, but you would also have a confirmation asking if you wanted to add the new layer to your current map, and if I select yes, it's going to add the shapefile that we created for this analysis and it gives it the uh, just a default symbol for its legend in this case it's this blue star and you see that you see this blue star if you can see where my mouse cursor is right now kind of on top of the building for the service centers and you may notice that all of these service centers turned red and that's because in the process of the analysis remember it's running on the entire uh, feature set so all the service centers in my service centers layer, and so it just selected all of them. And my selection color on this map is set for red, so anytime you select features, they turn red. And you see that all these service centers are red because they were selected for the analysis. And then it placed this new layer with this default symbol for this blue star on top of it. Um, and you see this blue star on top of each of these red buildings representing the service centers. And of course, I could change this symbol if I'd like to. Um, this is standard functionality in Simple GIS just by double-clicking the layer, opening up the Layer Properties dialog box, 
going to the legend symbols and I could check in a different symbol if I'd like. I could double click on the symbol, choose a different symbol from the um, various symbols listed here. If I wanted a blue triangle, for instance, I can just select that symbol and then click apply. And now it changes that. In addition, it unselected um, all of the service center buildings as well, so they're now back to blue. So it may be kind of hard to see that blue triangle on top of the, the building, but it is there. And if I was to actually click on this proximity analysis results layer that it created and use the view feature data tool and then click on one of these features to bring up its attribute dialog box, um, here you see the, the results in the layer. So here, this is the name of the service center. Uh, again, we see the number of service technicians, number of repair technicians, which it took that information from our service centers layer. So it just duplicated the attribute data. And then it added some new fields, though, that represents the number of features within five miles. So this is for all the calls. So it was 31 total within five miles of this service center location. There were 71 located within 10 miles. And then the average distance to the customer calls was 4.85 miles. And then below you get the table with a breakdown by the different call types, since that's how we grouped our results by. This shows you by the different call types. So for shop repair, there were 13 calls within five miles. For in-home repair, there was eight calls within five miles. And for maintenance, there were 10 calls within five miles. And you should notice if you were to add these three up, so 10 plus 13 plus eight, would total the 31 calls within five miles of the service center location. And so hopefully you see how the proximity analysis can be very useful to help you answer um, some, in, some important questions as you're you know, either dealing with your business or um, looking at marketing or, or you know, various problems that you could be looking at. You use it from crime analysis um, all of those different things would lend itself to this proximity analysis tool. And uh, as you can see, uh, it's very easy to get those results here in simple GIS. And so hopefully this was useful for you. Um, this was a fairly quick demonstration today, but we did want to show some of the enhancements that are now available in the version 14 release. And so with that, um, I'll bid you a good day. I will say uh, if you uh, like these videos, please consider subscribing um, to our uh, channel, our YouTube channel, which you can do so at the bottom of this video. Uh, I would also encourage you to visit our website. That website is simplegissoftware.com. That's all one word, and it's located in the description of this video. Thank you for your time. Have a good day.